are the fingers that are pointing at someone or something for this election result warranted, or is it just California being California? How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the California recall election effort. Unfortunately, Gavin Newsom is still the governor of California, so the recall failed. We don't have Larry Elder. We don't have Kevin Pathrath, a.k.a. Meet Kevin. We still have Gavin Newsom. Now, I'm seeing quite a few reasons for this all over the Internet, all over mainstream media. People are trying to blame Larry Elder for this. They're saying that he was too busy on Fox News promoting vitamins. He did not run a good campaign. He was a bad candidate. Some say it's a California GOP's fault. They didn't do enough. They didn't put any money behind Larry Elder. They didn't bring out the big guns. Not sure who the big guns are in California that'll work, but different story. I digress. The point is there's all types of blame floating around for this recall election effort ultimately failing. But I have my reasons. I think my reasons make the most sense. I'll get to those in a moment, but first let's back up. Let's go back to when this whole recall election effort started. Now, just to make one thing clear, this was a bipartisan effort. I'll repeat that one more time for the folks in the back. This recall effort was bipartisan. So when the media says, oh, it was spurred on by Republicans and QAnon, Trump supporters, right wing conspiracy theorists, whatever they want to call us, whatever kind of name they would have put on us. When they say things like that, know that it's not true. You had a lot of Democrats who don't like Gavin Newsom, independents, of course, Republicans who did not like Gavin Newsom. Crimes out of control. Taxes are real high. A lot of these uh, virus policies are not very good. They did not like Gavin Newsom, and they wanted them out of there. Okay? This happened before in California. That's how you get the governor, because the guy before him, I forget his name, but the guy before him, he was uh, recalled, and then they put the governor in there. We've been here before in California. Not me. I don't live there. But as a country, we've been there before with California as far as the recall. So it wasn't just this thing where it was one-sided. So when they blame Larry Elder for the recall ultimately not working, I'm asking myself, how does that make any sense? When the recall happened, when they got those 1.5 million signatures to get the recall, I don't even think Larry Elder was in the equation. It wasn't even about Larry Elder or Meet Kevin or anyone else, Kevin Faulkner. It was about Gavin Newsom not doing a good job. It was about Gavin Newsom needing to go. And that's why that ballot is the way it is. There's two questions. The first question is, should Gavin Newsom be removed or recalled as the governor of California? If you vote yes, you want him out. If you vote no, you want him to stay. And unfortunately, I think 64% of Californians who voted, voted to keep him in office. It's weird because I'm seeing different numbers I'm not saying there's weird stuff going on. Well, there probably is, but I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. But I'm seeing numbers from exit poll data that say that 45% of Californians think that Gavin did a great job with the virus. 45%, that's less than 50. That's less than the majority, but yet the majority and some voted to keep him in office. I don't understand how it makes any sense. And then I'm seeing other numbers that say, um, he is not doing good with the crime, not doing good with, with the taxes and the economy. So, you know, it's just weird. I feel like a lot of Californians who voted to keep him in office don't understand why their state is the way it is. They don't understand why they're paying six, seven, eight bucks at the pump for gas, for regular gas. They don't get it. They don't understand. It's like, why am I, why is my gas so high? Why are my bills so high? What's going on? All these crackheads running around, all these encampments all over the place. They don't get it. They think it's normal. They've become conditioned to California living. So they vote for Gavin Newsom, not even really understanding what's going on. And the problem is when they leave the state because they can't afford to live there anymore, they go to a new state for them, at least uh, a Tennessee, a Texas, uh, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado. They go there and they behave the same way they did in California they vote the same way they did in California. 
And then they're surprised when there's a big homeless encampment right by their house. It's like, hey, when did that get there? How did that get there? I left California and it came right here with me. It's like you brought roaches with you. The same policy, the same behavior you brought with you. That, in my opinion, is why this recall effort did not succeed. Why blame Larry Elder? Larry Elder did very well for a guy who was never been in politics before, who's a political pundit in California. He did well because out of those who voted to recall the governor, I think it's 46.9% as of right now, which is like 12 noon, uh, Wednesday, September the 15th, 2021, uh, 46.9% of those who voted against Gavin voted for Larry Elder. And again, this was not a partisan race because the second highest person is meet Kevin, AKA Kevin Pathraff, who's a Democrat. He had 9.8% of the vote. And I think out of the top four people out of the, I don't know, 100 <laughs> candidates, the top four, you got two Democrats and two Republicans again, not partisan. So why blame Larry Elder? There was not much more Larry Elder could have done. They're talking about, oh, you got to bring in the big guns from uh, the GOP. Like who, Trump? Is that going to work in California where Trump lost in 2016 and 2020? We know 2020 was weird with all the ballots and stuff going on. I won't belabor that point, so I digress. The whole point is that we know it's weird. However, go to 2016 when Trump won. It was not much different than 2020. And it was not much different than the recall race. Not really. I mean, if you look at the recall race as Gavin versus Larry Elder, which it wasn't, but if you see it that way, it, I mean, look, in 2016, Hillary Clinton got 61% of the vote in California. Trump got 31% of the vote in 2020. Trump got 34 or so percent of the vote, which is more than what he got in 2016. But Biden got, 63 or 64% of the vote. So it's it's not much of a difference. It's the same. So if Trump, who was more popular than Gavin Newsom and Larry Elder combined, and then some, been famous for a long time, had plenty of money, was well-loved all over the world before he became the president, and succeeded and won in 2016, became the president, if he did not perform well in California, how is Larry Elder going to perform very well? How is anybody other than a Democrat going to do well? And if it's a matter of trying to get Gavin Newsom out, why would you get him out and then put a Democrat in there if you're looking at it like Democrat, Republican, left versus right? Although it's not that, but if you see it that way, how was anybody other than Gavin going to win? It's not anyone's fault. I think this is more just California being California, unfortunately. Uh, it was a good try. It was a good effort. Some would say that it wasn't worth it. They're talking about <laughs> it's wasted taxpayer money. It's like, please, I don't want to hear any leftists, especially talk about wasting taxpayer money. Not in California where they subsidize crackheads, okay? They're giving money to dope fiends. They're shooting all types of drugs, uh, to be outside in Venice Beach, just banging needles, doing whatever they want to do. They're giving the money to do that. So I don't want to hear anything about wasting taxpayers' money. I'd rather my money go toward a recall election effort than to give junkies the needles to go shoot heroin for free from taxpayer money, if it's about that. So, but <laughs> I digress. The whole point is the taxpayer money excuse I don't want to hear uh, I think it was worth it because, again, it was bipartisan. It was not just a matter of uh, Gavin versus Larry Elder. It was Gavin versus the people. That's what it was about. And ultimately, we found out that the people, apparently, they still want Gavin Newsom. Now, I think those who voted for Gavin Newsom probably still want to stay in the state of California. They don't want to leave anywhere. Uh, it'd be crazy if you had people that voted absentee that don't even live in the state anymore. They didn't already left and went to Texas and Austin somewhere and they vote in absentee. It's like, why would you vote for Gavin Newsom when you left? You left, you fled. Or if you're trying to flee, you're trying to get a U-Haul, you're trying to secure a U-Haul, because that's kind of hard in California right now because everybody's leaving. You're, you're trying to secure a U-Haul. You're trying to get your job transfer. You're trying to do all that stuff. Knowing that it's not great in the state, you want to flee, but you still vote for the same guy. The had state looking like the way it does.
the logic does not really compute for me. But as I close, I want to say this. Shout out to everybody who tried to get this whole thing right, who tried to get this guy out of office. It was a good effort. And I'm not being weird or trying to be funny when I say that. I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm being serious. It was a good effort to get him out. But California, unfortunately, is run top to bottom with Democrats. Even if Larry Elder or anyone else were able to succeed and get Gavin out of office and become the governor, it was still going to be an uphill battle because the state is completely controlled by the left. And it wasn't like this before. When the governor won in his race, um, it was more 50-50. It was more like, you know, 55, 45, 53, 47, something like that. But now it's like 65, 35, really. In, in my opinion, it's, it's pretty much, you know, it, it, Silicon Valley's gotten so big. L.A. County is bigger than many states. It's rough to be able to get beyond that. I think going forward, they're going to need to break up that big state to have some more competition and not just one party nearly communist rule. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What's the reason why this recall election effort did not succeed? Is it because of Larry Elder? Is it Larry Elder's fault? Is it California GOP? Or is it just California being California? I think it's California being California. The same kind of voting patterns you saw in 2016 during the general, 2020 during the general, you saw right here. It's not much of a difference. Unfortunately, Silicon Valley, Los Angeles, they dominate. You may be in a conservative area in California and vote a different way, but it doesn't really make much of a difference when you're dominated by these two big places. Just like Virginia, where I'm from, when I was a kid, it was a solid red state all the time. But as I grew older, I started to see it becoming purple and now blue. Why? Because D.C. has gotten so big. Government's gotten so big. You have the expansion of D.C., the, the suburb area into Virginia, rather than it being Maryland, all of that to the north. Now they're going across the river and populating that area. That's the problem. One third of the population of Virginia is in northern Virginia, right there in like two or three counties. And it's mostly all blue because when they vote blue, they get more government expansion, meaning more jobs, higher pay. That's what it is. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.